Americans are paying more for everything because of left-wing extremist policies. Instead of addressing these major economic concerns head on, Democrat, the Democrat solution to inflation is to keep on spending. I just wanted to educate our distinguished colleagues that Democrat is the noun. When you use it as an adjective, you say the Democratic member or the Democratic solution or the Democratic plan. And so I assume it's a good faith grammatical error the first few times. But after people are corrected several times and they continue to say it, it seems like it's an act of incivility. As if every time we mentioned the other party, it just came out with a kind of political speech impediment like, oh, the Banana Republican Party. As if we were to say that every time we mentioned the Banana Republican member or the Banana Republican plan or the Banana Republican conference. But we wouldn't do that. The Democrat Party has truly lost their minds. From intimidating judges at their homes, burning down pregnancy centers and vandalizing churches, to calling moms and dads domestic terrorists, and now creating this department to censor free speech because extremists are scared has of expired. what? Elon Musk? They Gentle think ladies, social media censor expired. doesn't go far enough, and this needs to be defunded. And unlike some of our colleagues on the other side, we're not interested in censoring other people's speech. We want the whole world to see how the gentlelady from Colorado speaks in public as a member of Congress. We want everyone to look at that. We don't see anything remotely like the seriousness and the solemnity that we would expect of members of the United States Congress. But instead, they put up profanity. They mock the President of the United States. They make a disgrace of their own party by the way they behave on the floor of the House of Representatives. President Trump was in office when the COVID virus was released from a lab in, in China, from the Wuhan lab. And he tried to make that very clear that this came from China. And reporters regularly dismissed that. They called him a xenophobe because he was just saying where the virus came from. He did not mandate masks. Your president did. I appreciate the gentlelady's passion. There are two facts that she should perhaps be alerted to. One is that Donald Trump, on more than 20 different occasions, defended the performance of the Chinese government, and specifically um, President Xi, in terms of his treatment of COVID-19, and said he was doing a wonderful job and a great job, and they were working closely, and they were constantly in touch. President Xi is working very hard. As you know, I spoke with him recently. He's working really hard. Yes, I think he's doing it very professionally. We're also working with him and helping him as of the last few days, as you know. I spoke with President Xi. We had a great talk. He's working very hard, I have to say. He's working very, very hard. So if there's a problem with the Chinese government unleashing a virus, which has not been proven anywhere, but it certainly could be true, you would have to pin that on your uh, favorite president, Donald Trump, not on Joe Biden. The second thing is, President Trump's own special advisor on COVID-19, Deborah Burks, I'm sure you're aware and you, I'm sure you've read her book, uh, said that the lethal recklessness of Donald Trump's policies about COVID-19 cost Americans hundreds of thousands of lives. So you don't have to believe anybody on the Democratic side of the aisle. That's Donald Trump's own special advisor. It is past time we put America and Americans first. Joe Biden and his regime are shelling out benefits to illegal immigrants like Oprah Winfrey on her show. Everyone gets a vote. Everyone gets recognized, even if you're here illegally. In New York, aliens are receiving $53 million in free prepaid debit cards. In Denver, Colorado, aliens get six free months of housing. And now they want to hand them seats in Congress to buy their lifelong allegiance to the Democrat Party. Americans deserve to have their voices fully represented, not diluted by illegal aliens. I'm proud to be a co-sponsor of this legislation, and I urge my colleagues to vote in favor of this bill. Mr. Speaker, I yield back. Uh, thank you kindly, and uh, it's always uh, delightful to hear my friend from Colorado speak. One thing that I do want to point out, however, because there might be some students uh, in the gallery today, um, is that there can be no illegal aliens and there can be 
no green card holders in Congress, because the Constitution very clearly specifies that you must have been a citizen for seven years before you run for the House, and you must have been a citizen for nine years before you run for the Senate, and you must be a born U.S. citizen uh, in order to run for President of the United States, which some of the historians, as I think I mentioned before, uh, attribute to Thomas Jefferson trying to write Alexander Hamilton out of the presidential sweepstakes. In any event, um, I think that my colleagues should probably uh, relax with some of the hyperbole and exaggeration here. After all, all we're saying is let's keep doing what we've done since 1790 in the country. This is the way that the census and the reapportionment have always been run in the United States of America. And what they're proposing um, is obviously a radical departure from what the Constitution ordains. We are working to cut wasteful spending, get to the bottom of fraudulent payments made by the federal government, support American energy production, and oppose tax increases proposed by the Democrats. Economic strength and job growth result from policies that unshackle job creators, allow American ingenuity, and provide certainty. I want to just clear up a couple things. First, I heard the very distinguished general lady from Colorado mention job creators. I assume she was responding to President Biden since 12 million new jobs have been created under President Biden, whereas millions of jobs were lost under the prior president. Um, who may be a favorite of the gentle ladies. I also wanted to make a, just a brief semantic point because the gentle lady was making a, gram, a grammatical error that I heard some of her colleagues make before. Um, I believe she referred to a Democrat solution. I heard another member talk about a Democrat member and a Democrat plan. I just wanted to educate our distinguished colleagues that Democrat is the noun. When you use it as an adjective, you say the Democratic member. Out of pure political courtesy, when it's an adjective, refer to the Democratic congresswoman or the Democratic member. Having said that, I'd like to uh, say that I favor the Boebert Amendment. I think it's really the Raskin Amendment because none of them apparently caught the fact that their reporting requirement wasn't to be published until I told them, I actually read the bill and I said, you know, there's no publication of it. So this amendment follows through on the fact that I pointed out to them that they, their bill didn't even call for publication of the inflation information, which they thought was so essential. So I'm afraid I'm gonna have to support the Boebert Amendment because I think I'm the genesis of it. And with that, I'm happy to yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentlewoman from Colorado is recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I do just want to take a, a few seconds to respond. Um, that, was, that was great. Um, you know, we are addressed as MAGA extremists, extreme MAGA Republicans. And I would like to make um, just a clarification point. It's ultra MAGA. That's what we prefer. Yes. Madam Speaker, the Biden regime wants to talk disinformation. Okay. Let's give them something to talk about. Let's talk about how the White House said that it was Republicans that want to defund the police. Let's talk about how Secretary Mayorkas said the southern border is closed. Let's talk about how Joe Biden said his Build Back Better agenda cost zero American tax dollars. Let's talk about how Biden's new press secretary falsely claimed Trump stole the 2016 presidential election. And remember Afghanistan? Let's talk about how Joe Biden said any American who wants to come home will get you home. Well, that sounds like the words of a lying dog-faced pony soldier to me. The American people will not have their speech monitored by corrupt career professional politicians who lie day in and day out. And now, the DHS, a militarized department, has established a new disinformation governance board, or more accurately known as the Department of Propaganda. DHS was created to stop terrorism. Now it's being used to terrorize the American people. And who did Mayorkas hire to run this Orwellian Ministry of Truth? This lady, Nina Jankowitz. Mayorkas calls her an expert on disinformation. 
probably because she tells lies all the dang time. Nina said that President Trump would embolden ISIS. Well, he defeated it. Nina said the Hunter Biden laptop from hell was a Trump campaign product. Nina said that concerned parents who wanted a say in their children's education were pushing disinformation. And Nina said big tech should censor the Wuhan lab leak theory because it was, you guessed it, disinformation. Nina doesn't seem to have a good relationship with truth and will surely use this board to silence Americans. Nina is no public servant. How's that, you say? Don't take it from me. Here's her words. Are these the words of a public servant? What do I need to do to, well, Madam Speaker, I'll let you read the rest of that. This doesn't sound like someone who should be monitoring Americans' speech. The distinguished general lady from Colorado called the President of the United States or likened him to a, I think she said, a lying dog-faced pony soldier. We obviously could have taken those words down, but we have serious business to do here. We have come here tonight, Madam Speaker, to fight for the rights of the TSA workforce. More than 50,000 workers, we're giving them the same rights that other federal workers have. We came here to fight for the rights of federal firefighters, tens of thousands of them who will be able to benefit from this legislation if and when they get sick from illnesses caused by their work as firefighters. We came here to expand and improve the Community Services Block Grant in the Modernization Act of 2022, a bipartisan piece of legislation despite what was said about it on the other side. I believe there were eight members of the minority who voted for it in the House Education and Labor Committee. We are here to recognize the right of congressional staff to unionize, and we are here most significantly, Madam Speaker, on the additional Ukraine Supplemental Appropriations Act. And it's for that act that the antics and the diatribes of our colleagues are so profoundly disappointing to those of us who've come here to support President Zelensky and the heroic people of Ukraine who are resisting a brutal, illegal aggression by Vladimir Putin and his army. And we were hoping that we would have a bipartisan, unanimous support for this legislation to render the military and strategic, economic, and humanitarian aid that our Democratic allies need and are asking for and deserve to fight off this illegal, criminal aggression by Vladimir Putin, who is not a genius, but a war criminal and a mass murderer. That's what he is. And so we are very proud of the work that President Biden has been doing in unifying the democratic world against the autocrat Vladimir Putin and his naked, bloody aggression against the people of Ukraine, which has cost the lives of thousands of civilians already. And we've seen the war crime of rape spread at the hands of Russians, filthy soldiers, and we've seen them kill children, blow up schools and hospitals. Madam Speaker, Vladimir Putin and his cheerleaders all over the world thought they would make quick work of the people of Ukraine and President Zelensky. They only had supplies for less than a week. Everybody thought it was just going to be game over, as some of our colleagues have said, that Vladimir Putin would just cut right through them. But you know what they weren't counting on, Madam Speaker? They weren't counting on the spirit of a democratic people the noble people of Ukraine who have heroically resisted every criminal, aggressive act by Vladimir Putin and his autocratic cheerleaders around the world. And so today, two and a half months later, President Biden, having rallied the democratic world, having unified NATO, comes back to us and asks for nearly $40 billion in aid to support 
the strategic needs, the security needs, the economic needs, the humanitarian needs of a population that is reeling from the war. And, Madam Speaker, we say the American people are here to support the Ukrainian people. That's what we're doing here tonight. And I will reserve.